What is the story with scalp massage for hair growth? Let's discuss, does it even work? Hair loss is very distressing to cope with. As we get older, the number of hairs on our head goes down. We also experience a decrease in the diameter, the thickness of our hair strands. Men and women often deal with a hair loss disorder called androgenetic alopecia in which the hair follicles on our head progressively miniaturize, turning into little vellus hairs. In women, this leads to a widening of the central part, and in men, they often experience a receding hairline. One of the most evidence-based treatments for androgenetic alopecia is a medication called minoxidil. It can either be applied directly to the scalp or it can be taken by mouth in a pill form, and it certainly can work. How does it work? We don't really know the full story, but it's thought to work by stimulating ATP-sensitive potassium channels in the follicle, ultimately stimulating regrowth pathways. Not everyone is so enthusiastic about using minoxidil. It doesn't work for everyone. Some people may not have sufficient enzyme activity necessary to convert minoxidil to its active form. Other people are simply not interested in committing to using minoxidil from here on out, whether it be topical or an oral form. Here's the thing about minoxidil. It can work so long as you use it. Once you stop using it, your hair will go back to how it would have been had you never used it in the first place. It's not a cure. It just can improve hair growth while you're on it, whether it be topical or oral. So people are looking for alternatives. No surprise, there are plenty of quote unquote hair growth supplements out there. Majority of them have very limited at best research to support their efficacy. I have talked about many of these hair supplements. So check out those videos. There are also a variety of popular oils that people seek out. Other topical serums that are sold, many of which again have very limited, if any, research to back their efficacy. So it's a huge market out there of stuff that mm, who knows, right? You also have low level laser therapy that you can do at home. It certainly can help quite a bit. However, it's an investment as well. Um, the devices that you can buy to use at home, you know, they're not inexpensive, admittedly. So when you hear people talking about scalp massage and hair growth, yeah, I mean, that sounds really appealing because, you know, fingers are free, right? <laughs> So with that in mind, it's no surprise that when people hear scalp massage might help with hair growth, well, that's an attractive option because it's something that most of us could do if we were motivated to. What is scalp massage? That may sound like a silly question to ask. It's very obvious, but it's important to think about what exactly a scalp massage actually is doing. Scalp massage involves applying soothing light pressure to the scalp using either your fingers or some sort of scalp massage device. If you you want to get fancy. You can even get a professional scalp massage. I've seen those places here and that sounds wonderful. I'd love to try it sometime. Scalp massage has actually been shown in a few small studies to lead to a decrease in hair loss as well as an increase in hair thickness. Research on scalp massage also demonstrates some other non-direct hair growth benefits including namely a reduction in stress, a reduction in one's blood pressure, and a reduction in one's heart rate. All of these things can lead to benefit. Again, when we think about what it is that is happening with scalp massage, it involves applying mechanical pressure. So why might that be beneficial? Well, the most logical thing is that, well, through scalp massage, you increase blood flow to the scalp, which delivers growth factors and nutrients. That likely is a big reason why in research studies, people do seem to have benefits in terms of hair growth with scalp massage. The other working theory is that scalp massage delivers mechanical forces to the skin. You see, all the organs, tissues, and cells throughout your body, they're constantly being exposed to different mechanical forces. Your blood vessels, for example, they have blood coursing through them, banging into the blood vessel walls, so they can respond to that. When you have a cut or a surgical wound, as the skin is healing, it is subjected to tension forces that can influence healing and scar development. Our bones are exposed to pressure just from walking around, movement, exercise. When you massage the skin, including the scalp, it's delivering mechanical forces that are gonna be felt by quite a few players in skin biology. The epidermis, the dermis, the blood vessels that course through the skin, the little nerves that course through the skin, the sweat glands, the oil glands are also gonna feel that pressure. And all of these systems can respond to those mechanical forces. It's thought that the mechanical force on the hair follicles spurs them to, well, 
will grow hair again. That coupled with an increase in blood flow that delivers growth factors and nutrients to the follicle might explain why it is that one may see an increase in hair thickness and density with scalp massage. When I say may, what do we actually know about scalp massage in human beings? Humans in a steady setting, Is that does that even exist? It does. When men with no history of hair loss massage their scalp daily, they actually showed after 24 weeks, so roughly six months, an increase in hair thickness. Now, if you've watched my videos on minoxidil, you know, one of the things that can be very frustrating about minoxidil is that when you first start it, you actually experience a lot of hair shedding for the beginning stages of using it. And that is because there, those are hairs that are in the shedding phase and are supposed to come out. So it just kind of moves things around so that you shed those hairs all at once. But for people who are not aware that this is going to happen, it's very distressing because they have all of these hairs coming out all of a sudden and they worry, oh my goodness, is this actually making my hair loss worse? No. Well, what does that have to do with scalp massage? With scalp massage, the research suggests that when you first start doing it, you might actually experience an increase in hair shedding and an overall slight decrease in the number of hairs on your head in the beginning, in the first three months. This isn't true hair loss, but rather the massage is helping to dislodge those telogen hairs. So that is what you will see for the first three months, roughly, of doing regular daily scalp massage. But there's also another study of people, both men and women, with androgenetic alopecia. This study showed that 70% of patients who massage their scalp every single day for 20 minutes showed either stabilization of androgenetic alopecia. If you know anything about androgenetic alopecia, it is progressive, meaning over time, it gets worse and worse. Their androgenetic alopecia either stabilized or, or they got hair regrowth simply by doing 20 minutes a day of scalp massage. So yes, there's evidence that scalp massage can help with hair growth, that it can help with hair thickness, hair density, but don't be overly optimistic about what it can offer. Remember, these studies are pretty small, pretty limited, so more research is needed, but it may be sounding very appealing to you because not only is it something that you likely could do at home, by yourself without having to spend any money. I mean, of course, you could buy a fancy scalp massager if you wanted to, but you could just use your hands. If you're motivated to do it, you may be wanting to give it a try. Furthermore, if you are someone who's using minoxidil and happy with the results, you are someone who maybe is on one of the other medications for androgenetic alopecia, for example, and things are going okay, there's nothing to say that you can't also do scalp massage. <laughs> there's nothing to say that you can't pair scalp massage and low-level laser therapy or minoxidil. So you can do it while doing other more solid evidence-based hair loss treatments. Or if you've tried all those things, you have zero interest, but you're like, I think I'm going to try scalp massage. Why not? Why not give it a try? Is there anyone who should not try massaging their scalp? Well, I would say one group of people who may find that it causes problems for them are people who are dealing with urticaria. The medical term for urticaria is hives, and there are a variety of different types of urticaria. And if you have watched any of my videos on hives, I often point out that any sort of friction, mechanical pressure on the skin can elicit more hives. So massage, probably not the best idea. You might start getting hives on your scalp. Otherwise, this is a pretty safe thing to do. How do you do it? How do you do it? And how often do you need to do it? How long do you need to do it for? Any little bit probably helps. I don't have research to back that up, that it has to be exactly 20 minutes or else you're wasting your time. But I would imagine that every little bit helps out. The best way to do a scalp massage is to really take your time to make sure that you get all areas of the scalp. You do gentle circular motions with your finger pads or maybe you're using some sort of scalp massaging device. I have used one of these devices before. It was a very pleasant thing to use. I need to find it because it's been a while since I've used it. If you have thick hair, you might try parting it to really get at your scalp. Here's the other thing I'll point out. There's nothing to say necessarily, although I don't have research to support this, but there's nothing to say necessarily that you need to spend exactly 20 minutes all at once massaging your scalp. Like you probably could do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening, or you might do, I don't know, five in the morning, five in the afternoon, and then another 10 in the evening. So you could break it up throughout the day, possibly. That possibly 
actually might be more doable for you and you could still potentially get the same results. Potentially, because again, don't have a study to back that up. You've heard about the rosemary oil for hair growth craze, right? And there's also a lot of enthusiasm for a variety of other oils for the scalp for hair growth. And I've talked about this before. The research to support that is simply not there. More research is needed. But in my opinion, a lot of the benefits that people allege in terms of hair growth with these different scalp oils comes down to likely the fact that you have to massage them in. So I think a lot of people are just getting the benefits of scalp massage and they're attributing it to the oil. That's a possibility. All right, guys. So that's what I wanted to talk about for today's video with regards to scalp massage for hair growth. It's definitely something worth considering, especially if you are highly motivated to do it on a daily basis. It's going to not only potentially benefit your scalp and your hair, but it also may help with relaxing you. It may help, research suggests, with improving some cardiovascular parameters, blood pressure, heart rate, and it just feels good. <laughs> um, let me know in the comments if you plan to try scalp massage. And also let me know in the comments if you've ever had a professional scalp massage. I'm seriously considering it because I just find scalp massage to be very relaxing and that sounds like a great way to unwind. All right, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.